Here is another question that was sent from one of our viewers who was in the process of building a stairway like this using brackets to connect the treads to the stringers, except for the fact that the stairway was going to be about seven foot wide and used for a commercial building. So keep in mind that some industrial, commercial, and public stairways might need to be structurally stronger. And I've ran into this case more than once. So let's just say that you're going to build or design a stairway like this one here, the first thing you're going to want to think about is using larger treads. For example, you can forget about using a 2x12, and I've used a lot of 3x12s before and even 4x12s. However, I have never used a 6x12, but that might be something to consider. And next up on the list will be to add a center stair stringer, and that could be a 2x12 or even a 4x12 if needed, and you might need to use more than one of them. So let's just go ahead and take a look at how we can attach the stringer to the floor floor, concrete floor, wood floor, and how we can attach the treads to the stringer because it's going to be difficult to get a long screw through here. And I'm not about to suggest that it's impossible. And if you can use longer screws, then go for it. Keep in mind that these are only examples and they might not work for your project. So one method would be to use the same brackets that you are using on the other stringers and of course the same fasteners. Another would be to use another type of building hardware like these framing anchors and you could always put them on both sides and stagger them if needed. So if you remember, we had one on the other side, but it was located closer to the front of the tread. And again, you can use more than one stringer, depending upon the width of the stairway. Another idea would be to fill the riser area with some type of a board that could be connected with the building hardware of your choice, and if possible, screws, nails, or lag screws, depending upon the thickness of the riser and the length of the stairway or the width of the stairway. And of course, you could use as many nails or screws as you feel necessary to create the proper connections for this design. And keep in mind that a lot of building codes today require closed risers, especially if you're dealing with a stairway that is going to be used for a fire escape or fire egress, and that these materials might need to be at least an inch and a half thick to create a one hour fire rated stairway. Next up on the list, maybe we could use some type of metal brackets that you could have fabricated at most metal fabricating shops or maybe make them yourself. And this could just simply be a piece of angle iron with a couple of holes in it that you could attach with lag screws. And again, you could use as many as you need or use larger ones. Or you can even contact a structural engineer to find out what they would suggest. And this is something you might need to do anyway, especially if you're dealing with your local building department and building inspectors. And the last suggestion, and one that I think would be the easiest to do, would be to build a wall underneath the stairway. And again, you can use more than one wall depending upon the width of the stairway and the size of the treads that you're going to be using. And of course, you can change the material sizes and even rotate the materials 90 degrees if you need more surface support area underneath the tread. Now keep in mind that this design here allows us to connect to the back of the tread and the front of the tread, creating support for both the front and the back. And of course, you can use a few of these different ideas, like the screws going through the treads or even the building hardware to attach the 2x4s to the treads. Now in this example here, I do not recommend less than a one inch overhang or positioning any of your support braces closer than an inch to the front of the stair tread. And the reason for that is because there's a good chance people walking up the stairway are going to hit the front of their feet on almost every one of these boards if they are closer than an inch away from the front of the tread. So I would suggest moving them back. And to do that, all you're going to need to do will be to create some type of a spacer 
like we have here. Something that creates at least a one inch distance here. And of course that will be another lesson if you are not paying attention to me now that you will be more aware of as people start to use this stairway and complain about this being located right in the middle where everybody walks. And in this example we are using a lag bolt to go all the way through the support board and the spacer into the back of the tread. And if you were using a 2x6 instead of a 2x4 you could always put two lag bolts in. And here we are also using one of the most common framing anchors imaginable in the construction industry to connect the support brace to the bottom of the tread. We do not want the treads moving up and down. Everything needs to be secured and firmly attached to prevent potential future problems for a stairway like this or its users. 